some six minutes after eight. Here's a, a conversation we tabled for yesterday, but it's even better that we're having this today because there are a lot of things that unfolded yesterday and we've got the update. We're talking about the Association of Law Students. Uh, they've petitioned the president and parliament uh, to cause the withdrawal of an ally that's before parliament. I've got uh, uh, the association president joining me for a conversation. Noah Ephraim Tete is the Law Student Association president. Good morning to you. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So let's go back to what your issue really is. Let's go back to what's your problem. Okay, so from the start, um, somewhere 22nd June 2017, the Supreme Court gave a decision in the case between Professari versus the GLC and then the, um, the Attorney General, mm. in which the court stated emphatically that um, the entrance examination and interview imposed by the GLC on students who were seeking admission to professional level at the Ghana School of Law was in itself unconstitutional. Mm. Now, in its orders to um, the GLC, it's that the, and the GLC should put a system in place within six months and to ensure that the situation that led to the case being brought to the court is not repeated. Now, the actual reason why the case was brought to the court was because over 3,000 students had been denied their constitutional rights to access legal education in Ghana. So then it's our view that whatever the GOC seeks to put in place shouldn't in any way constrict access to the professional level, which will bring us to the same point where um, over 3,000 students, because over the years, mm -hmm. other students will be adding up, yeah. will also be denied access to professional level. So our argument is, is simple. We are saying that based on the decision of the Supreme Court and a careful look at the provisions at uh, Section 13 of um, the Legal Professions Act, which is supposed to guide the GOC in regulating legal education, it clearly states that the only thing needed by a student to qualify to enter the professional level is a degree in LLB. That is it. And therefore, anyone who has LLB in Ghana is qualified to do their professional training. Our point also is that there is a confusion as to legal uh, professional training and the Ghana School of Law. These are two different things. Le um, professional training is different from the Ghana School of Law. Okay. The Ghana School of Law is an institution, it's a school. Professional training is a system to help anyone who wants to access legal education. And it shouldn't be, cons um, it shouldn't be seen. So a person needs to only go to the Ghana School of Law before he can access professional training. Okay. Uh, I want to fast forward because yesterday you were in Parliament. And so I want to en engage uh, a man who is very familiar uh, with this ally that's before Parliament that you want Parliament to withdraw or, yes. you know, say no to if you like. So let's engage the Member of Parliament for Offences South constituency in the Ashanti region. He's also the Chairman of the Constitutional Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee and also a member of the Subsidiary Legislation Committee. Uh, ben Abdallah Banda joins us via phone. Good morning to you, sir. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, good morning. So can we first of all clarify this issue? This ally that has come uh, before Parliament, that law students uh, essentially have petitioned Parliament to say no to, is it before the subsidiary legislative committee or is it before the committee that you chair? Okay, um, thank you very much. Let me say good morning to all listeners. Um, the petition... Uh, uh, currently is before the Committee on Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs. But prior to that, prior to the laying of the uh, regulations before Parliament, uh, the same petition um, has come before the subsidiary legislation the committee, mm -hmm. of which uh, I am a member, and we deliberated on the petition. Uh, the original rendition of the regulation contains entrance exams and interviews. But, but at the end of the day, after a lengthy deliberation, uh, we, we came to a compromise that the entrance exams should be deleted. Now, at the end of the day, the, no, the interview should be deleted. The portion relating to the interview should be deleted. But the portion relating to the entrance exam uh, was left untouched. 
then the regulations were laid in Parliament. Thereafter, um, before you petitioned the Speaker, that they were not self-satisfied. Um, the portion of the regulation dealing with the conduct exam, and they gave um, certain reasons why they were not satisfied uh, with the portion relating to the conduct of entrance exams. They gave so many reasons. And this petition was referred to us. We met them yesterday after we had gone through the petition. Uh, we listened to them orally, and they presented their case. The committee, as of now, uh, taking any definitive decision on next because mm. we are yet to meet tomorrow with the subsidiary legislation because it was just the committee that uh, originally worked on the petition mm -hmm. and worked on the LI. So it is appropriate and prudent that the two committees should meet and take a, a joint a, a decision mm. on their petition. But the government of the petition was that that portion of the regulation dealing with the conduct of the entrance exam uh, infringes upon section 13 uh, of the Legal Profession Act 1960, Act 32. That is the kernel or the government of the uh, uh, of their submission. Okay, and that's what you are yet to take a decision on. But in the meantime, uh, we know that when an ally is laid. Uh, for 21 days, irrespective of what you're doing on the side, the days keep going. And if nothing is done before the 21 days, then it passes, correct? Yeah, that is correct. 21. Okay. So what day are we in, if we're doing the countdown? For the counting, uh, I, I don't know where, how many days uh, we have gotten now, but it's not up to 21 days yet. Okay. So we are within time. And I believe when we meet on Thursday, we will take a final and definitive decision on the petition and um, submit our report uh, to the speaker, for the speaker to give a direction on the same. Okay. So would the, would the decision be taken by the entire parliament? At the end of the day, when we submit our report to the speaker, it will depend on the directive that the speaker will give. Mm -hmm. But with respect to the annulment of the regulation, it's of the entire parliament that has to take the decision because we need to third majority of members of parliament to annul the regulation. Okay. On the other hand, if parliament doesn't annul the regulation and we impress or prevail upon the general legal council to withdraw the regulation, they can also before. The, 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 the 21 day elapsed would draw the regulation. And whatever is there to sort out or trash out, same can be done before new, I mean, new regulations will be drafted mm. and real for Parliament. Okay. Ms. Abla, yesterday you met the students uh, who petitioned Parliament. Are you meeting uh, the Ghana Legal Council? Are you meeting any other group? Uh, that decision uh, was not taken yesterday. But I believe it is appropriate and fair that once uh, we've met the students, we have to meet the General Legal Council and also look to the other side of the story. These stories have been told before, and we've heard both sides of the story uh, before. Mm -hmm. But I think that once the students came and we listened to them, I think it is appropriate and prudent and just that we notify the General Legal Council that this is what the students uh, have come to say, what is the action to it. Mm. Okay. So whatever you tell us, then that will inform the decision that it will take, but based on the position of the law. Okay. Two things before you go, sir. They've also petitioned the presidents. So are you collaborating or are you waiting for the executive to also essentially take a decision on this? Would, there be, would we see some kind of collaboration going on between parliament and the executive? 
Um, the, the petition sent to the uh, president, I've had the opportunity of uh, reading through it. That petition, to the best of my understanding, when I read it, it's predicated upon policy issues. What the executive has to do in order to expand access to legal education in terms of infrastructure and so on, in, in terms of making resources available and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. That the policy issue that is within the section and purview of the executive. Okay. But are, as members of parliament, particularly concerned with the legal issues. And okay. that is what we are going to delve into. So even when the executive hasn't taken a decision on the petition sent to the president, we uh, have the obligation we have the obligation to ensure that would bring a closure or a finality to the petition brought uh, to the speaker, which uh, has not been referred to us. Finally, yeah. uh, finally, sir, when should we see Parliament uh, taking a definite position on this? Uh, I can't tell uh, because that will depend on the that will depend on the leadership, and that will depend on the timetable of Parliament. That okay. I believe. To the extent that the exigencies of time demand that we take a definitive decision on that, to the extent that if we don't, the 21-day period will elapse, I believe Parliament, uh, the, the leadership and the speaker in Parliament will give the petition the necessary I mean, uh, consideration it, 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 it actually deserves. Okay. All right, sir, I would like to say thank you for your time this morning. Thank you for speaking to us. Uh, that's a member of parliament, also chairman of the Constitutional, Legal and Parliamentary Affairs Committee. And he's involved in all these. He's, he also chairs the Judiciary Committee and also a member of the Subsidiary Legislation Committee of uh, Parliament, member of parliament for Offenso South constituency in the Ashanti region, Ben Abdelabanda. Still have... The president of the Law Student Association uh, here, Noah Ephraim Tete. So what's the way forward? You're waiting for parliament? Um, okay, um, what we'll say is that this issue, a careful look at it shows that it's not just a legal matter. It's also a matter of public interest. And that's the reason why we petitioned the president also. Even though we have made our submissions as to the fact that conducting examination before a person can gain admission to the, um, to the professional level is in itself a violation of the provisions of the Legal Professions Act. We are also saying that Parliament should also look at um, public interest in this situation. Okay. It's in the interest of us, and Parliament represents us, and we believe that if Parliament is supposed to give essence to any law that comes before it, Parliament should also look at how it affects the interests of the people they represent. Mm. We believe that denying access to legal education in Ghana is something that does not just, we don't just need to look at it in terms of the law, also need to look at it in terms of policy and how it affects people in Ghana. When you say denying people access, it's, it almost sounds like you've come to a conclusion that they're denying. Can we say for a fact that that's what the Ghana Legal Council is doing? Yeah, we can say that for a fact. As um, rightly um, put, looking at Section 13, it clearly shows what the Ghana Legal Council can do. And that is to ensure that people have access to legal training in Ghana so far as they have a degree, which is the LLB. Now there are over 3,000 people in Ghana with a degree in LLB, and that qualifies them to have access to professional training. Now, the General Legal Council running the um, Ghana School of Law can't can say that you need to pass an exam before you come to our school, which is the Ghana School of Law. But where there are other institutions, other faculties in the country that can also run a professional level, we feel this faculty should be allowed to do that. And then the General Legal Council can set a final bar exams, which is being done all over the world. And that will be um, a way to determine the quality as who becomes a lawyer mm. in practice in Ghana. Okay. If I fail the exams, I fail. I can't be enrolled as a lawyer. Sure. Yeah. So have you heard from the presidency? Because you petitioned uh, the president as well. Have you heard from, at least you've heard from parliament, they called you. Mm. Have you heard from the president? Um, no, we've not heard from the president um, as of now, but we are hoping that within these few days ahead of us, we'll hear from the president. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So until a decision is taken, we all fold our arms. Have you been counting the, the MP... Uh, wasn't quite sure, but do you know how many days we've done with this LI before Parliament? Yeah, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure myself. Okay. Yeah, I'm not I had sure two myself. weeks, but you know, 20 days is really short. 21 no, days it's, is... It's 21 is, parliamentary, parliamentary sitting. sitting. Yeah. yeah, but so, I don't see a break anytime soon. Yeah. 
Okay. okay. All right. So we see how this goes. Uh, and then we will come back to you if there are any updates. Okay, so we thank you for your time. But you're at KNUSD. Yes. You're in Accra because of the, of the sitting. And I hold you before <laughs> the, <laughs> our own committee on the AM show. Uh, but thank you so much, okay. uh, Noah, for your time. Stay with us. The transfer window is closing later today, like tonight, if you like. So who is going to be transferred where? What is being put on whoever's head? We've got two of our giants. You would love them, absolutely. George Adeginia and Gary Al Smith. They will hook you uh, later tonight, but they are on the AM show to tell us what to expect. That's what is to come here on the show. So absolutely stay with us.